All righty. Recording is in session. Good morning, everyone. This is Lisa Harnish with Certification Partners, and I'm here today with Dr. James Sanger and Patrick Lane and Stephen Schneider for our latest CIW webinar. Today we are discussing the topic of turning Internet consumers into producers, the updated CIW Internet Business Associate courseware. Good morning, James. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Patrick? Good morning. Hi. I'm doing great. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, James. Good morning. And we've uh, brought uh, we've brought Stephen Schneider with us uh, uh, out of Tennessee. You are in Tennessee, aren't you? I know you're a traveling guy, but I think you're home right now. I, I am in the uh, in the home office, so to speak, in uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes. Good morning, guys. So we've got a fairly nationwide thing going as far as the United States is concerned. We have uh, Patrick Lane calling in from Dana Point. I'll say Dana Point, Patrick, but Southern California. And we have uh, uh, Lisa at our home office in Phoenix. I'm up here in, in uh, the Netherland, nether world of uh, the Northwest in Washington State, and then, of course, Tennessee. So I think we're doing pretty well, guys. So I'm uh, excited to be here. Excited to be here uh, talking about the uh, Internet Business Associate Certification, or what I call IBA. What I wanted to do is show everybody uh, the agenda here. Uh, this is what we're going to be talking about. Um, first of all, just about a little bit about us and a bit about Patrick Lane. Uh, we're then going to talk about why we're providing the IBA, the Internet Business Associate Certification, and then some changes. Uh, as with last month, I'm kind of sticking to a mathematics theme. How about that to keep everybody interested, huh? Uh, we're going to talk about additions to the course and certification, subtractions, and the ways that we've uh, done a bit of dividing of the content as well. A little bit about how industry likes the Internet Business Associate Certification, how CIW empowers uh, instructors, uh, then talk about the availability of the courseware exam and about how IBA prepares you for the future. And then uh, we'll be here to uh, uh, answer and take any and all questions. Lisa, is there anything that you want to cover before we go ahead and get started? Sure. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, we'll let everyone know that, yes, we are recording this session and it will be posted to our webinar as soon as it's available. And we will also be sending out the slide presentation from today's event um, later on in email, either later on today or probably early tomorrow. Um, I also want to point out that everyone is muted by default. That's to help keep the background, background noise to a minimum so that everyone can hear James and Patrick and Stephen clearly. Uh, there is a questions tool in your GoToWebinar panel. If you have any questions, by all means, type them in there. If it's a question that I can answer, I will certainly do that. Um, if it's not, I'll hold that and defer to James for him to answer by the end of the session, if not before then. I think that covers everything, James. No, that's perfect. Thanks so much, Lisa. All right, well, Stephen, Patrick, let's go ahead and get things started. I think everybody now has had a chance to take a look at the agenda. So let's go ahead and tell, uh, I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about CIW for those who may not have heard of us too much before. CIW, Certified Internet Web Professional, is a skills-based education standard. We take a holistic approach to certification, and that means we have provide courses and certification exams to teach about web development, web design, how to think proactively along those lines. And our whole approach is to put people on a lifelong learning path concerning web development and web design, not just a, a vendor's product treadmill. Uh, we're vendor neutral. We go and grab the best vendor applications as judged by industry, and we also grab open source material uh, and, and tools, and we focus on competencies and job roles and how people need in the development and design world to approach their work from a competency and job roles based perspective. We're globally accepted. We have over 65,000 certified individuals worldwide, uh, whether they be in, in England, Europe, Japan, uh, and elsewhere. So um, as a result of our approach, Internet.com has named us a, a top developer search. They've recommended us as uh, number three right after uh, Oracle and uh, uh, Microsoft's approach. And they said basically when you combine in-demand skill sets and proven salary impact, CIW is, is the way to go. And uh, you can read the full Internet.com article at the following 
uh, at the article there at the bottom of this particular page. And again, everybody will get a copy of the PDF PowerPoint, uh, of this PowerPoint slide in PDF form, so you can go ahead and do that. Our approach in putting people on a lifelong learning path is basically where people can start with the CIW Web Foundations Associate Certification. And part of that is the Internet Business Associate Certification. You can start there, and as you move on to be an IT administrator or an IT executive or an IT, um, and an IT manager, CIW follows you along the way. Or as you move on to your associates and your bachelor's degree and your master's degree, CIW moves all along with you too um, uh, um, in your professional uh, degree and your professional career. When it comes to job roles, CIW provides you skills that set you apart. For example, if a traditional e-commerce specialist might make $63,000 in, in a particular part of the United States, for example, whereas the approach to the CIW e-commerce specialist that we have gives you a significant bump in pay, more than 10, uh, more than 10 grand uh, a year. Uh, the same way with job, being a JavaScript developer. CIW's approach gives you a significant uh, uh, increase uh, in pay because it gives you more skills. The same way with our database developer certification. And once again, you'll get a copy of this in PDF form so you can follow these links and learn more about it uh, and, and see what we've uh, and, and verify what we found in our research. When it comes to web design, for example, uh, traditional web designer might make somewhere in the high 60s, whereas the CIW Web Design Professional Certification gives you skills that gives you a good bump in pay. We found that people worldwide talk about CIW. And they, uh, one, for example, says no other internet job role certification can claim uh, the same size, credibility, and acknowledgement as CIW. And CIW certify it. People are in high demand. Other people around the world are talking about how CIW certifications are in high demand. And then if your resume has CIW on it, you will be in demand. Well, speaking of in demand, Patrick, let's talk about you for a second. Tell, you, uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. I've got uh, your, your face stuck here on a slide. And you have a lot of uh, experience in HTML5 and security and server administration and other things. Tell us a bit about yourself. Oh, sure, James. Uh, I come from a, a very um, a broad background based in education and technology. Um, I received my master's degree in education, uh, my California State teaching credential, and I also went forward and got an MCSE, uh, this is back in the 90s on NT, and proceeded mm -hmm. uh, to move forward with server administration, security, and courseware development. Um, I've always had, you know, a always had some type of contract or project going on with uh, courseware development. Um, I went on and worked at an enterprise, a large enterprise, uh, with about 11,000 users and helped uh, design, deploy, and manage a uh, content management system uh, that we use to distribute um, you know, all types of information throughout the, the company. And uh, most recently, I've worked on uh, HTML5 uh, application programming interfaces with, uh, and that's essentially a combination of HTML5 uh, cascading file sheets and, and JavaScript uh, to actually replace uh, technologies such as Flash uh, for delivering content onto uh, iPads and um, and such, uh, because you know the plugins are hopefully going to become a thing of the past, so these mobile devices can run uh, more efficiently. Right. And yeah. uh, and then uh, right now, I'm just having a great time revising the uh, Internet Business course. So what's great about Patrick, everybody, is that he brings a technical background and also an instructional design background, and a tremendous amount of experience in this. Uh, and again, we've got. Uh, um, Steven Schneider, who has been uh, working in technology for many years uh, in many different forms, both in academia uh, and, and in business. So uh, we're excited to be talking today about the Internet Business Associate Certification. Now, you know, why do we have the Internet Business Associate Certification available to everybody? Well, first of all, the world needs tech-savvy workers. Isn't that right, Stephen? And our goal with 
Internet Business Associate is to turn consumers into producers. Everybody knows, I suppose, how to browse the web. Um, but how many people really know how to use the web in the workplace becomes the question. And it's not just the web. It's the overall Internet and how it's used. So we're talking about mobile devices. We're talking about traditional desktops and understanding how all of those things are used in business. And so Internet Business Associate is designed to prepare students for workforce retraining, career technical education, or STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics program. So it's, it's designed to help people who are 15 all the way to 50 or 65 or 85, doesn't matter in terms of age. We also are aiming Internet Business Associate at digital natives, Gen X and Gen Y, or even earlier, because we found and so have other people. There's an article here on ZDNet you can, you'll be able to follow. We found that Gen X and Gen Y know of the technologies, but the big question is when it comes to business, do they use them properly? And digital natives, they need to know how tech is used in business, and that's precisely what Internet Business Associate is designed to do. You'll see later on how it's basically um, the gateway to the internet in terms of education. It opens people up so that they can learn more about the web if they want, more about networking if they want. But Internet Business Associate is a certification that should be taught to everybody somewhere along the line. We would ideally love to have this taught in every high school, every community college worldwide, every further education college worldwide, because it basically is designed to tell, to get people to be more tech savvy. Stephen? I've tried to cover it fairly well. Do you have anything to add, particularly to you know why we have the inter we offer the Internet Business Associate certification? Well, just just, just a couple of real quick points, James. Um, first of all, you you talk about people being raised on the internet, which is true, and and getting that firm foundation in in what the internet is all about, how we use it, how we work with it. And then the, the underlying theme of personal information management. How long does information stay out on the Internet when you put it there? Um, when do you know that it's okay to put some information about yourself uh, online? And, and, and right. this, this whole, whole uh, philosophy of being able to use this Internet. Because, and, and, and how are they going to use in the workforce? Well, I don't know, James. Do, do businesses really use the Internet you know, much? And, and, of course, the answer to that is, is, is well, you know, are you crazy? Um, and, and so, you know, a, a skilled employee needs to understand this Internet technology, not only for themselves, but also for the benefit of the company. And we can, well, I mean, we'll, we'll go into a lot more detail on that later on. You bet. You bet. So one of the things that people will talk about, uh, at least in the United States, I've heard it uh, else, elsewhere as well in the, in the U.K., is the phrase 21st century computing and what all that, uh, what that means. And that means... For example, things such as bring your own device, working with mobile devices such as tablets, also traditional PCs, and how they are all used in business. Let me stop right here, and um, let's talk about uh, BYOD. Patrick, you've you've written, haven't you, uh, some blogs and things like that uh, about uh, BYOD? Have you not? Oh, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Well, so so you, you're supposed to say, no, I don't know what you're talking about, James, uh, and that, that way you wouldn't have to answer any questions about it. But tell us about what, what, BYO, what BYOD means, right, and tell us what the implications are in the workplace here, just a little bit, because I think this is very, very relevant to Internet Business Associate because the whole course, the certification is designed to get people up to speed to understanding various types of devices out there and how they're used in business. So tell us a bit more about this BYOD movement and what some of the implications are. Stephen, feel free to chime in and grill Patrick as much as possible. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, bring your own device. BYOD is a, a buzzword you're going to hear uh, quite a bit now because we're really having another transformation of information technology departments uh, throughout the world as mobile devices become more prevalent. What you've got is you know, employees bringing their iPads, iPods, um, smartphones to work. And so IT departments are grappling how they're going to you know, manage these personal devices, whether or not they want to integrate them with the you know, existing system or if they just want to ban them altogether. A very interesting survey came out that said at companies, 
where mobile devices are banned for employees, you know, their personal uh, systems, that is, 60% uh, of them go ahead and use them anyway. So I think mm -hmm. this is one of those <laughs> times when if you can't beat them, join them. So IT <laughs> is grappling. <laughs> so IT is grappling with DYOD. And so we discussed some of those uh, solutions or strategies uh, in IBA right now because one of the, the big, uh, if I were to you know, classify some of the major upgrades of the IBA course, one of them absolutely is mobile devices. And, okay. Yeah, and the and how they're going to be incorporated into business, um, how they're affected by security, um, how they're affected and used uh, with cloud services, for instance. And so uh, that's one of the big themes of the upgrade to IBA, James. I think that uh, absolutely, yeah, when it comes to, you know, what the significant changes are, clearly it's going to be things such as BYOD and, of course, the cloud and talking about that. What we've done with Internet Business Associate, and folks will get more into what we mean by the cloud and IBA shortly, but no other program is designed to empower individuals with the essential technologies that we're talking about. We don't talk about how to repair outdated PC hardware or hook students into one company's software development platform. Uh, we don't talk about office software training. We're, we prepare students for the future and the internet and how it is used and, and of course, the, the web. So let's talk then, folks, about the changes that we've made. And, and here's the mathematics part here, so everybody get out your pencils and your protractors. We even use protractors anymore. Um, uh, and, and let's take a look and see how we've uh, added, subtracted, and, and divided. So important additions, again, are BYOD. We've also updated information in regards to technology adoption models. And folks, by technology adoption, well, adoption models, we're basically talking about things such as Moore's Law and understanding how quickly technology changes and how innovation occurs. Because one of the things I know uh, we wanted to do with the Internet Business Associate certification is not only bring people up to date about how technology is used, but also to give people an understanding, the foundations as it were, of how technology innovation works itself. So the whole idea that if you teach somebody um, the foundations of something, uh, the real principles behind the technology, then as technology updates itself every year or, or every six months or every 18 months, people understand some of the principles and how those updates happen. We've also updated some of the material, and there's a screenshot here talking about the CEO and how that uh, and the typical business structure works. And I saw Patrick that you've you've updated that as well. And I don't know, Stephen, Patrick, wouldn't you agree that what's what's really unique about the Internet Business Associate Cert is that we don't just uh, certify people's knowledge of how browsers work or any internet tool works, but also we focus on uh, how people work inside a business so that they understand how to work in a team, so that they understand how to work, uh, whether it be for a business development department or in IT or in marketing for that matter, so they understand how teams uh, and uh, different parts of a company use technology. Is that fair enough? Does that make any sense? Oh, it absolutely. is fair enough, James. It's, it's, and it's, that's really part of something that came over uh, from the original IBA, we, we, we talk about the different roles in IT and, and, and where people fit in and, and, and work in that type of environment. And then I think, Patrick, I think you've even expanded on that even more with the, with the new version. Uh, yes, indeed. There's still um, a great deal of soft skills in this book. None of it's been removed. Mm -hmm. What's there has uh, simply been upgraded uh, as you know, technology has, has advanced. Um, we're finding these job positions, you know, incurring uh, more um, tasks that they're responsible for. You know, IT is becoming a pretty complex place in, in some ways. It's becoming complex. It's also becoming ubiquitous in that everybody needs to understand a little IT in order to uh, in order to do their business. And and that way, it's one of the fundamental changes. Uh, Patrick, you really created the original foundations, the uh, you know certification back in the day. It's neat to see you come back and 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 uh, you know make further changes to it. And I think that's one of the main things that has 
changed is that foundations originally was kind of envisioned as, okay, folks, here's how you start in the IT world. Now things seem to have changed basically a bit, saying, obviously you can go that route with Internet Business Associate, but now it's, here's how technology is used in business, uh, even if you don't plan on becoming an IT professional, per se, right? Oh, absolutely, James. It's pretty incredible what has happened um, to me because I helped develop the original CAW program, and then I left and I went out and got about a decade of real-world experience, and now I'm coming back to, to help develop this. I'm very, very passionate about CIW and, and these course books. And so I'm able to apply, you know, what I found working out in these you know, enormous enterprises uh, to mm. CIW, and um, and you know, in some ways it's the same, in some ways it's uh, entirely different. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how it all uh, comes together. So, additions that we have uh, continued to make uh, to the certification to the to the courseware is, for example, creating a blog. And and what's interesting uh, I find about this is that for these days we talk a lot, um, educators talk a lot about the common core standards, for example, and the importance of writing. And what I find interesting here is with CIW, we're, a, we're basically able to show how IT and writing and expression and thinking all go together. So I'm, it's exciting to see how we're basically focusing on contextual learning, you know, on how to communicate effectively using web technology, of course, internet technology, and then understanding what it means to uh, write for an audience. Uh, so I know we're, we're adding that. We've also added more about Twitter, haven't we, Patrick? So uh, also um, video. You've, you've basically looked at a lot of the labs that we had and said, well, now not only can we do uh, Skype, right, but we can also bring video into it. So I see you uh, bringing the course uh, to, it, to the next level there. So uh, that's, that's uh, some exciting additions as well. That's right, James. I've got two th oh. two things to add here um, to what you right. just discussed. Uh, one is the fact that you know we are moving to the cloud. You've discussed the blog. That's actually using the Google Blogger service. One thing that's expected of all the students mm -hmm. in this course is that they're going to have two accounts to two of the most enormous clouds out there. One is the Google Cloud, so they'll need a Google account. The other is the uh, Microsoft Cloud, which is the Windows Live Cloud. And so students are going to need you know, accounts to both of these, and they're going to be using the services that each of those providers uh, offers. And you know, one of them is Blog and Google. Um, another is a video. You've got uh, messaging. Uh, we actually do video messaging as opposed to just you know, standard uh, IM. And so that's a really cool thing you can do now, which is far easier. So Love it. You know, the schools will be will need a webcam. Um, we didn't think that was too much to ask for in this day and age. No, I think what we found is that uh, people can, uh, uh, when the student goes home, for example, there's certainly going to be uh, probably a webcam lying around somewhere. Uh, also, internet access, if that becomes an issue in the community college or further education college or in the, in the uh, secondary school, uh, students could also do a few things at home as well to make up for that. But we found that what's interesting about IBA was we're making it much more geared towards student self-expression and, and how that raises issues. And, and, to, and we want to expose and talk about those issues in terms of internet privacy. We'll get to that in a minute. But, um, uh, understanding what it means to communicate in today's modern world. And so that's why uh, we brought these things out in uh, the Internet Business Associate. Because again, these things aren't just about how people can talk about themselves, it's how people can talk about themselves and their business. So I think that's uh, uh, very important to understand as well. So these are, these are exciting additions. Uh, one of the examples also. Uh, that is in here and talking about uh, what the cloud can do. I noticed that, that there was a lab, for example, that you go into um, uh, some of Google's cloud computing capabilities and you go into basically from storage to apps to thinking and maps and things like that. Uh, tell us a bit more about some of the uh, cloud-oriented labs that you've, uh, that you've uh, brought in to the certification or into the, into the coursework, Patrick. 
Oh, sure, James. You can almost look along the Google menu and <laughs> that'll look like yeah. done. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> because, uh, you know, as we talk about the cloud, uh, one of the things is data storage. And so we actually hook up with, um, in this case, Google Drive and, in Microsoft's case, the Microsoft SkyDrive. And so students, because they have these cloud accounts, you know, automatically uh, are, you know, can set up accounts so that they can store um, files and, and, and whatnot into the cloud. And this is extremely important because as we come out with uh, you know, new operating systems, for instance, uh, Windows 8 is going to be you know, very cloud aware. And right. if Microsoft had their way, everyone would just have a uh, thin client, uh, just that, like back in the old mainframe days, um, where they are, you know, all of their data is actually stored, you know, in the cloud, and they just really mm -hmm. have a user user interface in front of them. You know, that's really where we're going, and so you know, we do you know teach those skills here in this course. Um, you know, we have the students set up email accounts, traditional email accounts, send them to one another. Uh, we also have the students, uh, you know, do the video messaging, which I had mentioned. Uh, previously, we also have them learn how to write blogs, which I think is extremely important. You know, that's a big part of my life is writing blogs in my career, mm -hmm. and, and I think that you know the students absolutely have to have an understanding of that, how they work, and uh, I think they're really going to enjoy that uh, quite a bit. And then we also use uh, maps. I've got some fun uh, geolocation. Um, activities in the course where students will actually locate themselves using a, uh, a very simple uh, HTML5 API uh, using uh, JavaScript, which I think they'll, they'll find pretty cool. neat, and it's it, it pretty simple, too. And we'll see what's great about that is that these are things that, that, frankly, we all use every day, even if we all aren't wearing Google glasses yet. And yet what you're doing is you're showing the technologies that people that are going to be following people's lives or helping people's lives. And you're showing, we're showing kind of what's going on underneath the hood. So uh, that's exciting. That's neat to see. Another one here where you have as part of that kind of self-expression idea where uh, you can create your own radio station. Now, I find this interesting in that uh, not only is it self-expression, but it you begin to understand in a practical way crowdsourcing. It's a hands-on lab. It teaches how web-based technologies work out. Students learn about streaming content. And so it's not just listening to music. It's kind of understanding how this entire media uh, works these days. Isn't that, isn't that about right? What, what you were looking to do with, with this particular lab? Uh, that's correct. The, the whole lab is under a crowdsourcing heading, and it's in the realm of uh, yeah. social networking, um, where in the case of Pandora, you've got people that um, you know, essentially like or you know, don't like uh, specific music. And Pandora mm -hmm. keeps, a track, keeps track of what everyone likes, and from that it's able to um, you know, put together radio stations based on what other people like and, and then present them to you. So when you go in there and say, you know, I like the BC Boys, I, I don't like the BC Boys, you know, and it finds that you're listening to, you know, Pearl Jam, the, the BC Boys and, and whatnot, it can then take that information. So if someone puts together a BC Boys uh, radio station on Pandora, it will give them the BC Boys, it would also give them uh, Pearl Jam and other related artists. So it's really cool because Pandora is not coming up with those lists. It's the people that are using the service that are coming up with those okay. lists. It's crowdsourcing is really, really neat, and we're going to see more of it. It's very cool. So if you do Pearl Jam, and then you do uh, the Beastie Boys, and then you do Django Reinhardt, does the, does the browser you know, implode at that point, or would it be able to handle that? <laughs> the, entire system, the entire system would crash, James. <laughs> okay, so Stephen, there's no Django Reinhardt. Okay, don't you know? Don't, you can't yeah, have that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. But 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 now I'm now I understand where my listing for the big hair bands comes from. <laughs> okay, <thank you. laughs> oh, move on, James. Please move on. <laughs> Time to move on. Yeah. 
Well, uh, when it comes to pure cloud technologies, and folks, what I mean by pure cloud technology is the techie stuff. We certainly get into that as well. So, Patrick, for example, you uh, you delve more deeply into software as a service, and all and all of those as a service models, right? And also grid computing, and then advantages and issues having to do with cloud computing. So, so uh, what I like about what what uh, our approach is here is that instead of saying, "Hey, the cloud is good," students learn about when to use it and when to consider alternatives and even doing old-fashioned types of things. So I, I noticed that, you know, offline storage options and, and things of that nature. So I, it, it's neat to see that uh, that uh, Internet Business Associate, that certification is obviously aware of the cloud and we explain how it works, but then we also, of course, show uh, issues that can happen with it. That's exactly right. In many cases, we actually do the service both in the cloud and locally. For email, we use mm -hmm. Gmail up in the cloud um, and Hotmail up in the cloud, but we also have them, you know, download a uh, standalone app, which is uh, the Windows Live Mail application locally, and then configure cool. uh, locally, you know, how to download their web, um, you know, email account. So it's really cool. They actually do it in both locations. Yeah, great, great. We've also uh, added material, more material about audio and video. And, and obviously, as the world gets more interactive, uh, people have to become more troubleshooting oriented uh, in understanding how audio works and how the codecs work, how to download codecs when you need to for both video and audio. And I think this is what's interesting about this, uh, uh, Patrick, is that this discussion not only makes you uh, people more savvy consumers, but it sets the stage for further discussions. And by d further discussions, I'm, I'm talking about other courses where people can then, as they learn about designing pages, they now know, okay, yeah, I know about what a codec means. And when you're, they're learning HTML5, they'll understand of those three codec choices what the more popular ones. So this is how IBA sets a very good foundation to talk about things in terms of designing pages, development, accessibility. Um, I can't help but think also when you mentioned geolocation about how you explain how that works. As students want to go more into design, into site development associate, the certification that we talked about last uh, month, that um, this course does a very nice job of, of setting the stage for those kinds of discussions. Yeah. Um, one of the things, oh, uh, so uh, one of the, uh, so f for example, <clears throat> in Lab 5-7, you go into viewing uh, Aug Vorbis files in Windows Media Player and in any media player, uh, for that matter. And so once again, students learn about what goes on underneath the hood in today's technologies and also teaches a bit about troubleshooting. And, and you talk about video uh, conversion techniques in, in this lab, don't you? Or is that in another lab? Um, no, we absolutely work with both uh, video okay, and audio and audio files. Um, we stick to you know the three main uh, formats in each that are supported by the new HTML5 um, you know protocol or specification. Mm -hmm. um, so we focus on the three, you know, like MD4, MP3, you know, AUG, of course, and um, and the others. Good. Right. And the whole idea is to create media savvy users, but also people who can move more quickly into being producers. Now, uh, there's some things that we've subtracted, right, from IBA. You know, we got rid of news groups and as you're talking about Telnet, and even though obviously LDAP is used for you techies out there, used all over the place, Windows Active Directory and everything, we de-emphasized a few areas along those lines to make sure that the course uh, is a proper introduction to these technologies rather than delving too deeply into it. Isn't that about right when it comes to making the subtractions? Is that what you had in mind, uh, Patrick? Uh, right. Well, what we do is just mention them briefly and you know, mm -hmm. basically state, you know, if they if they want to learn more, uh, they can proceed forward with the CIW uh, Foundation theory. Uh, That's because right. This, yeah. this, this, this material is covered you know, in detail in uh, the networking course. That's right. And we'll be profiling uh, folks. We'll be talking about the Network Technology Associate course in the next uh, webcast in June. So Stephen, I think this is probably fairly good news for you in terms of some of the subtractions, or at least I should say abbreviations, that we've done 
uh, I think it's that it makes the course much more welcome and I think uh, much more hands-on. Uh, isn't this feedback that you've you've received uh, over the past while and we wanted to make sure we honored that. So this is your chance to say, no, but it's not good enough or yes, it is good enough. <laughs> no, it's not good No, I'm just kidding. Um, it it yeah. is. Um, a lot of these, a, a lot of the technologies that we've taken out, we have. We receive feedback. You know, we'd rather have more input on the technologies that are currently using, that the students are going to be using as they go out into the workforce, which Patrick has done a great job, I think, in including into into the course. Mm -hmm. And and the the topics that we've you know that we've mentioned, we've taken the the, the content out about it, and, and as Patrick mentioned, kind of replaced them in with the network. Uh, technologies more where they belong, so to speak, as as, as opposed to the the Internet Business Associates. So I, I think it's a good fit. I think we did the did the right amount. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There's some rearrangement that we've done. That's where the dividing comes in here. Uh, some of the things that uh, Patrick, do you care to talk a bit about, for example, what we did with uh, lesson eight in, and lesson two to make the course more interesting and get the students doing things uh, more quickly? What are some of the changes that you made there? Probably the, the biggest. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Patrick. Uh, this is where you get to go. Gee, what did I do? I don't remember. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah. in this course, uh, you know, probably the biggest change as far as the flow of information is we moved uh, lesson eight to lesson two, and so we've got essentially students in lesson one are going to learn about uh, the the basics of IT business and careers. Then they're going to move into internet communication. We thought that made the most sense because internet communication serves as an excellent springboard to the remainder of the content in the course. It's really where they're you know, going to be doing some basics, almost more of the client side aspect of these technologies, uh, such as you know, social networking, huh. messaging, blogging. And then as they go through the course, they're going to be learning more and more about what's under the hood and um, you know, ways in which you know, the whole back end is working and ways in which each of those technologies is applied to business. And so it, it's really nice the, the way it works now. It's just you're springing from lesson two into uh, the additional uh, lesson. So from an instructional design point of view, you know, I believe it, it is quite an improvement. And then those were based, of course, on our series of meetings that we had discussing this. It That's also right. does it exactly it. what our what the point of the course is is doing. It's it, it's creating yeah. producers, and so we're 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 getting the students to start producing content directly in lesson two that they can produce and continue and expand on. Use those technology and communication skills as they go through the rest of the course. As Patrick was saying, you know, they get under the hood and they start you know figuring out how the things work later on, but they're also being able to use it to produce content as they go through. And, and more and more we're seeing this type of technology being used throughout acad academia. So it's, it, it's good to get them started at the beginning. A lot of them use it throughout the course. That's right. And we were talking about this as we took Stephen's input after all the work that he's been doing with educators really worldwide now. And as um, we took in the technology changes that Patrick brought in. It was exciting to see how the, the logical flow of the course changed and how, uh, like you said, uh, Patrick, that started students looking at the client and then starting to look you know, underneath the hood and then onto the server side. So there's a, such a logical progression now of getting people to understand, deeply understand the technologies that are happening today. That's, that's one of the really exciting things about this course. Another change that you made, uh, Patrick, and this has to do, again, with input that Stephen had, had to do with renaming the, uh, the uh, Internet security uh, lesson, right, and talking about protecting yourself online. Uh, let's talk a bit about the whole idea of the importance of protecting ourselves online and, how, and why we included that uh, so heavily when it comes to uh, Internet Business Associate. And clearly, everybody, um, there, there needs to be a very scalable and very comprehensive understanding uh, that everybody needs, whether they're 55, 85, or 15 years old, how to protect themselves online with social media, to recognize risky behavior and, and take prob uh, proper steps if a problem occurs. Um, what are some of the other changes that were made, uh, Patrick, to this uh, section? in uh, talking about personal privacy protection. Well, sure, James. Uh, the old lesson nine was called Internet Security. We moved that 
and it's now the new Lesson 8, and it's been retitled to Protecting Yourself Online. When you get into the lesson, it's more of a uh, personal approach um, as employees are in the workforce. Um, they have an ID, IT department that's you know, assisting them, but there's a certain degree of, you know, of, of self, um, uh, how can I put it, you know, where, the, where, an, where an employee is also responsible uh, for themselves and, you know, mm -hmm. keeping themselves safe on the Internet. And, and so we go into, you know, things that they need to look out for, you know, from a personal approach for, from an individual. And so before it was, you know, here's what a firewall does. Um, which is great, right. you know, here's different virus, you know, uh, detection, you know, software. And we actually now go into, hey, here's what spam is, you know, here's how you can protect yourself from being completely inundated by it. Um, here's spyware. Here is, you know, how you can protect yourself from spyware. Um, here are, you know, some of the latest and greatest of viruses. Here's how you can protect yourself from it. So really we give a problem, we give a solution. We give a problem, then we give a solution. And so it's become much more, I think, more of a real-world um, implementation of mm -hmm. Internet security, and it's, uh, it's come out quite nice. Um, we also talk a lot about, um, and you mentioned this, James, is their reputation. And we talk about social networking in particular. When students have to remember when they were in high school and they posted you know, pictures of themselves, um, you know, engaging mm -hmm. in behavior that might not be um, <laughs> not, might not be rewarded in a corporation. Uh, you know, they have to <laughs> remember that you know there is some information that won't be forgotten. In particular, if an HR department goes out looking for them, so they need to understand anything they post. Um, you know, whether it be pictures, uh, videos on YouTube, or you know, even text messages and emails. Um, it can be, it, it will not go away. It's a permanent um, record in most cases. And they really have to be aware of that. The Internet has a long memory. Yeah. And setting up a profile, setting up logins, which we, by the way, do cover everybody. I mean, uh, I think people don't, aren't quite aware of the fact that that you are not a person, right, until you create some sort of profile. It doesn't have to be just with Facebook or just with LinkedIn or what have you or YouTube. It has to do with whatever service you want to access. That profile and the information you generate under that profile can follow you and will follow you in, in various ways. And so that's another thing that we talk about, personal privacy protection. And I think, Patrick, you had a really good point about that the the older course kind of talked about here's what a firewall does or whatever and and we've now personalized it so that people are much more aware of their context within a business uh, Stephen what do you think isn't that kind of what internet business associate is all about and uh, and talking about how people can be become more not only tech savvy but aware of their particular situation you know well I'm in a private setting right now or I'm in a business setting and, and understanding how how technology will impact both of those contexts. I mean, is that what do you think, James? It, it really is, and and the comments that you and Patrick have been making are you know just it's spot on, and it's it 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 is a super important topic, and it's a super important topic that kids understand, students understand, um, adults with without um, a lot of technology experience they understand what information they're putting online. I was actually in a presentation for my daughter's school last week, and I was just shocked at some of the information that was going out from, oh, the Internet is a bad place and kids can't be on the Internet. Well, that's not exactly true. The Internet is a great place. What it is is you have to understand the technology, the tools, and understand yeah. what you're doing. And, you know, it's, we, we turn kids loose with a cell phone or, you know, whatever with Internet access or at home with the computer. Um, as long as they have the skills to know what they're doing, um, it's it's not something to be forbidden. I think. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's incredibly. Yeah, you can't just important to understand security. Absolutely, and it's not something that uh, I don't think technology is something that we can just say stay away from it. It's you have to become savvy in how to use it properly, so it doesn't end up using you, right? I mean, 
Correct. That's really a, a key. Yeah, interesting story, uh, Stephen. Thanks, man. Thanks. Well, so uh, there's uh, no, uh, some of the divisions that we've talked about. Uh, so we've uh, talked about protecting yourself online and also personal intellectual property. Again, how your past can come back and haunt you. Um, uh, it's difficult to get that, uh, to achieve the right to uh, uh, practically achieve that right to be forgotten. But we also uh, go uh, heavily into the concept of intellectual property and how important that is and that to, uh, not to steal it. And, and some people's idea of sharing content is actually, uh, some, is, you know, can be construed very easily and properly probably as theft. And so we talk about the importance of respecting uh, the property of others. Well, let's talk about some additional courseware changes uh, that we've done for Internet Business Associates. Uh, Patrick, you kind of uh, talked about this a little bit, but we, we changed software requirements. Uh, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was make the courses easier to set up and easier to teach. Uh, Windows 7 or 8 is kind of up to you, right? Um, a lot of Macintosh, uh, there are some people out there who like to use Mac systems instead. You can adjust the steps along the way as you go. In other words, we have a lot of hands-on labs that are written towards Windows. You can also virtualize Windows on your Macs. Um, we also find that uh, a lot of the more progressive students, will, uh, instructors, will have their students say, uh, okay, yeah, we, we see that some of these labs were written for Windows devices, uh, uh, Windows PCs. We're going to follow along, whether it be on their iPhone or whether it be on their Android, and see how um, all these systems can work and play well together. So in, in essence, what we're doing is we definitely write to a standard in Windows, Windows 7, but we also are excited to see people basically doing a BYOD approach in education as long as that's uh, appropriate uh, for them. But uh, Patrick, anything that you could tell us a bit more about the Windows 7 approach, uh, et cetera? Oh, well, I would just say in a nutshell, the labs are written to Microsoft Windows 7. And the Thanks. browser would need to be the latest version of Google Chrome, uh, IE9, and, and Firefox. Uh, the reason is, is you need to have an HTML5 compliant browser for all of the, the labs to function properly. Um, okay. However, we have, for the most part, the course is written browser uh, independent. Uh, there's only several labs that specifically require you to use you know, Firefox or Chrome and those are the ones when you're just going in and, and modifying the, you know, the settings. Uh, otherwise, you know, we don't even specify which browser. We just say, open your browser. You could use Opera if you wanted. And I think that's great because you know, as mobile phones and, and smartphones are progressing, they just created a, you know, the version of a Chrome for mobile devices. And so you've got essentially the exact same browser on your smartphone as you would have on your desktop. So it, it doesn't matter for the most part. Great. Great. Thanks, Patrick, for the overview. Appreciate it. Uh, so once again, about the uh, browsers, uh, we have, have written this to include various browsers, Firefox, Chrome, IE9, and mobile browsers. And the idea is that students are being introduced to these tools uh, so that they understand them as, as business tools, but also uh, they can receive an introduction to both uh, design and uh, their uh, and career in tech. Well, the approach that we've taken uh, with uh, Internet Business Associate over the years and, and all of foundations uh, has, has paid off. Uh, we have uh, worked with various corporations, inc including uh, a cloud-oriented uh, set of companies that have combined recently within the last year or two, SimCorp and Consana. These companies. Uh, basically, we've uh, we've worked with, and uh, one of the persons there is Jim Bush. He's a veteran in security and virtualization, and he basically states, as far as I'm concerned, everyone at our company could benefit from CIW Foundation's training, of course, including Internet Business Associate. Uh, associate. He finds it in very interesting, and he uh, uh, repeatedly said, you know, there are things in here that I should have known already and that I was taught in IBA. So uh, it's something useful for new employees as well as seasoned vets. Another guy named Michael Grautner, who was a new technical consultant for uh, Consonus, basically said that it was uh, very useful for him. And he, he found that he actually used our text to answer client questions. 
So this is uh, exciting stuff. And the additions that we've made are going to make, of course, IPA even all the more valuable. Well, it's not all just about the technologies that we cover uh, as much as uh, we love that. Uh, uh, you know, Stephen, what we've done is uh, in our pedagogy, which means that the way we teach it is very important. We, uh, we basically use modular lessons. And uh, Patrick, feel free to certainly chime in on this. The idea is that students can see progress on projects, or at least progress on concepts. And then it helps students to understand not only how a web page is created, of course, but how um, different technologies work together. But we also make sure that the lessons are modular so that instructors can pick and choose lessons to use at a particular time. And this way, if students miss a lab or skip things, that they can easily catch on uh, as things go along. So uh, from a pedagogy perspective, I wanted to include this slide so that people understand that we um, are very careful from an instructional design perspective to uh, take the uh, instructor and the student, uh, keep them in mind at all times. Um, let's talk a bit about some courseware features. Uh, uh, Stephen, uh, first of all, what we do is we do a lot of PDF-based uh, uh, courseware delivery via our CIW campuses. And we also have our course mastery uh, feature. So as students read through the, the course and as they are taught the course in a very hands-on way by their instructor, there's also course mastery, which is a unique testing engine. It uses what I call a feedback loop technology. We have a partner that we brought in called Knowledge Factor. And their product called Amplifier not only asks students questions like any other quizzing testing engine would, but it also asks them how certain they are of each answer that they give. And based on the student's certainty, it allows the student to very quickly understand, well, I was you know, confident and wrong about, say, 25% of some of the things that I answered. And that helps them understand very quickly how to remain a confident person, but to be confident and right and it allows them to adjust their thinking much more quickly. Uh, Stephen, what do you think about this whole uh, the course mastery approach? You, you've uh, been doing a lot of studying lately in instructional design. Um, how has it helped students? It, you know, it, it's interesting <laughs> um, because you know, I, I kind of refer to course mastery you know, as, as, as uh, kill and drill on steroids. Um, uh, so to speak, and, and, and I, I say that with all pun intended um, because the, the kill and drill is, is not that effective as far as learning, other than pure fact. Not at all. Um, you know, if you if you take a look, you know, at some of the research at at, at, at Keller's, you know, personal system of instruction, where we're we're basing um, content off of review and feedback. Uh, this is this is a great approach. Um, the psychology in back of this says, you know, that it, it increases um, it it excuse me, it decreases learning time. A student will learn material faster based off of this system because just as you commented, you get a question. You select your answer and then you say, you know, how sure I am that that's the correct answer? I'm absolutely sure. Well, I'm somewhat sure, you know, I'm really guessing. You know, and then and then you get the feedback and the supplemental material, that's where the learning is really occurring, you know, because, you know, wow, I was wrong. I was I was that completely wrong. I completely misunderstood this concept. Uh, and, and you get that feedback um, and, and the supplementary resources. So the next time you see the question, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jar your memory. It's, and, and it gets into long-term memory at a faster rate. So it's a really good supplement material in, in, in working through the courseware and, and getting these concepts mastered. And we also, of course, in addition to hands-on exercises, provide drag-and-drop exercises, supplemental videos, and then our practice exams that are designed to uh, absolutely mock uh, up the um, VIEW and Prometric and CTC Online uh, high-stakes exams. So we have a comprehensive uh, solution in addition, of course, to uh, course mastery. Can I throw when one of the revision history? Real quick? We, oh, you bet, man. You bet. Let me uh, go back to that slide for a sec. You bet. Absolutely. One really quick, because I, I know we're pushing time, but um, the pre-assessments. We actually also offer pre-assessments that can be done at the beginning of the class that gives the student an idea of exactly the type of content that's going to appear on the actual certification. So at that point, they've got an understanding of how familiar they are with the material. And, and it doesn't matter if, if they, if they you know, really get a bad grade on it, because it, it gives them an idea of the types of questions and material key points that they need to follow through with the rest of the material. 
it's a great tool to use with the courseware, the exercises, and, and the course mastery. Yeah, pre-assessors is so important. Thanks for bringing that up. So, Patrick, what you can see, what we're doing is we're taking all of the great technological additions that you've brought in, and we're wrapping them uh, very nicely into a comprehensive package. So, you should uh, we're doing you proud. Um, we are offering an internet a, a revision history <clears throat> for those of our existing customers. We can certainly provide that. Uh, you can grab it from a sales representative. Uh, contact us to get a copy, and, and it would help you understand the changes that we've made to the course and whatever changes you'd like to uh, make in your particular course. When it comes to availability, folks, um, revised courses will be available in August uh, of this year, August 2012. Uh, and, and again, we're talking about uh, various changes, uh, using technology and business, BYOD and privacy, protecting yourself online. The new exam number will be uh, 1DO61A, I believe, and, well, it is. And uh, that'll be available in December, so you can contact your account representative for more information. Uh, how does uh, how do the changes that Patrick uh, made uh, along with Stephen prepare you for the future? Well, first of all, it can prepare you for the rest of foundations, and that's one thing that uh, we're very keen on on showing is that we're doing a rolling update of all of IBA uh, site development associated is uh, becoming available, Internet Business Associate we're just talking about. Next month we'll talk about NTA, the last part of foundation. It can, uh, this course can prepare you to become, for example, a web design specialist or an e-commerce specialist or to move into development uh, with JavaScript and uh, even database. But of course, this course, IBA, can prepare you for the rest of your career. It creates tech-savvy workers no matter what you do. Yes, technical, that's great, or non-technical careers, and it's available to everybody regardless of age, of course. So uh, we're uh, coming right up to the top of the hour, but what questions uh, do people have uh, for Patrick or for Stephen about the Internet Business Associate Certification? Lisa, what kinds of uh, questions are being uh, uh, bandied about there? There's been uh, certain questions about various different things. One question I had myself is, will the self-study kits be available at the same time as the instructor and student guide courseware is released, or will that come slightly become, later? Those will become slightly later, and what I can do is get you uh, a definitive word on that after I uh, uh, talk with uh, okay. a product development on that. So just ask your, uh, uh, ask your uh, people about that. But the self-study kits will, when I say your people, your account representatives, everybody can ask that. But yeah. you will find that those will come online very quickly because um, uh, that is really how we fulfill to most of our clients is through self-study, okay. or at least to, to a lot of our bigger clients. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we did have a question earlier in the session uh, saying that no one knows what CIW is. What is CIW doing to become more like Microsoft or Facebook, you know, recognized, you know, by, by large uh, corporations and, and business leaders and so on? Great question. One of the things that we've been doing over the last uh, year, two years really, year, year and a half, is uh, heavy duty talking to people uh, in the uh, in the certification industry, uh, uh, working with uh, CompTIA, talking with them, uh, 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 getting to know all of our uh, particular vendors better, but we're also get, talking to people such as Consonus and, and other tech companies so that they are aware of it. And you're, we're uh, talking more and more to people in HR departments so that uh, CIW Preferred ends up uh, out there, so that people are aware of the benefits of hiring CIW people. CIW right. certified people tend to be better troubleshooters, tend to be more savvy technologically, of course. They get projects done on time. So we're, we're uh, uh, blitzing people more and more uh, uh, in every sector, not just tech sector like Google or Apple, but also in the finance sector and manufacturing, service, uh, and, and the service industry as well, you know, getting the word out. So that's, that's a major right. part of what we're doing. Right. Okay. Also engaging more with state leaders. Yeah. Uh, the uh, there was also a question people. asking you, uh, this may have already been covered as well, but another uh, uh, attendee was asking about uh, IPR and copyright issues and how royalty payments for web-based radio and so on. I think that was in reference to a slide you were discussing earlier. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're focusing mostly on the crowdsourcing, I think, is, is, is where we want to be on that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, just uh, as Lisa comes up with more questions, uh, everybody uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific on June 27th will be talking about our Network Technology Associate certification. So I want to make sure people saw that uh, uh, b before we end the webcast. And uh, there's my contact information. Also, you can follow us on social media now that that's come up uh, on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn, of course, and YouTube. Uh, uh, more and more videos are coming online as well. Uh, Lisa, I think you had a question. I cut you off. Uh, no, I didn't. Actually, I was just reviewing the questions here in the in the uh, questions and answers panel, and it looks like we're covering okay. most of everything that's in here. Okay. Well, once again, everybody, you can follow us on CIW uh, on all the major uh, 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 social media sites, and I want to see if I can go back uh, to uh, the. Uh, somebody just asked about uh, you know uh, other webinars of this uh, kind. Yes, we hold them really roughly about every month. In fact, sometimes more often than once a month. And the next one again mm -hmm. is coming up uh, June 27th. So sign up. You can go up to ciwcertified.com. Uh, sign up. All right. Well, I think we're about done. Uh, so I want to mm -hmm. thank uh, you, uh, Patrick, very much for uh, joining us and, and telling us about the changes that you've uh, brought in. And Stephen, uh, thank you so much uh, for working with uh, Patrick and and uh, getting these changes uh, uh, brought in and the feedback that you found from all the instructors uh, worldwide. It's, it's terrific having you two uh, uh, having you two on and talking with you about. It. Thanks, James. Thanks, man. Well, uh, go ahead, and I'll turn the time over uh, to you, Lisa. Thank you very much for all the time that you've put in on the on the webcast and helping us out. So uh, I'll hand the time over to you. All right. We'll go ahead and end this recording now. We have been recording it. It will be posted on our website uh, hopefully uh, later today or sometime tomorrow. Um, the slide presentation will also be sent out to everyone who attended today later on as well. And we thank you all for attending and participating with us. Um, watch your emails for the presentations coming out. There will also be a, a simple request for us to for a survey that we'd like to get your opinion on a few things on this. Helps us improve future webinars. Um, so if you are able to respond to that, we would appreciate that. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us back, and we'll try to answer them as much as we can. Thank you all for attending today. <laughs>